Text to Give is our quickest and simplest way to give using your credit card or bank card. All you need to do is text 610-285-1866 with the amount of your gift and note whether it is your tithe, offering, or other. For example, 100 tithe or 100 offering or 100 other. If it is your first time using text to give you will be prompted to either create a new account or give anonymously. Creating a new account makes future gifts more convenient and less time consuming. In addition, you will receive email receipts. Well, welcome to our first Wednesday night back since March. Hallelujah. If you don't attend on Sundays, we've been growing each and every Sunday, which has been an absolute blessing to me. I'm so thankful that, you know, in some states you're being arrested for going to church. I wanted to read to you the First Amendment, but I forgot to bring it. But uh, we, in the United States of America, according to the Constitution, we have a right to gather together. And the government has nothing to say about it. But uh, we seem to be listening to what they're saying in restrictions. So if you're listening online, we're back here Wednesday. Don't let anything uh, keep you from coming to church. Nobody, we answer to a higher law. Uh, on Sunday, a couple of weeks ago, I preached a message called uh, the kingdom of God. And I d taught you in the word of God that we are not of this kingdom. We are not of the kingdom of darkness. We're not of the kingdom of man. We're of the kingdom of God. And so uh, Georgine Parsons had some church shirts made up for us. I've been wearing mine that says the one phrase that I've learned to say when things start to frighten me or get me concerned, that is, all is well in the kingdom of God. Because that's where we dwell. We're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. We shouldn't be afraid of things, stuff like that. Amen? Uh, just to remind you that, yeah, the, the, uh, the seniors are going to be meeting next Tuesday, right? At 10 a.m. So if you have not signed up, please sign up. If you forget to sign up, just show up. Uh, we're going to have social distancing and all that they want us to do. And so it'll be safe to come out. We're going to have a great time with the Word of God and Pastor Shane will be sharing with you. I know it's going to be good. Um, and just to let you know that uh, Wednesday, we're saying this is an experiment, but we have turnout like this. This is great. Praise God that you're here. We'll continue to do that. Uh, but, but we have a lot of talent in this church. A lot of other pastors here, Pastor Shane, Pastor Markey, our children's pastor, and uh, uh, Pastor Russell, who's our youth pastor. And they've been doing Wednesday nights online. I've been doing that. And they've been an absolute blessing. And we have a good... Uh, people, amount of people watching that on Wednesday night. So we appreciate them. And so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to be speaking every Wednesday night. I'm going to allow that talent, that anointing, and the other people to be coming up here. They'll be rotating between Pastor Shane, Pastor Markey, and Pastor Russell. Uh, and so they're going to be an absolute blessing to you guys. I guarantee you, uh, because God will use them. Amen? Amen? God can use a donkey. He can use me. If he can use me, he can use anybody. But praise God. Also, to let you know that Tuesday nights from 7 to 8, we changed our prayer nights so to make uh, the music ministry can come out now. If you have Bible school, you're coming Tuesday. You can come Thursday. No, wait, there's, we come, yeah, they come Thursday. We're going to be here Tuesday nights. So if you want to come out to a great time of prayer, we had a great time. It's only one hour. And I love our format, and we're praying for our country. I hope you realize that only God is going to be sorting this mess out. And uh, we just got to trust and believe God. This is a time for Christians to be on their faces. We have the power to effect change. And if we don't take up our responsibility, then whatever happens takes place is, hate to say it's our fault, but it may be partially our fault. So be people of prayer. You can make it to prayer. Be praying for our nation. You may not like our president. You know, the Bible says pray for kings. Those kings were horrible kings, and they were commanded to pray for them. They had to pray for... Uh, the Caesars, and they, you know, they were, these Caesars were fed and Christ, feeding Christians a lions, and they were commanded to pray for these guys. You know why? If I can change, the Word of God says that God can turn the heart of the king as he changes the course of mighty rivers. And so if we pray for these people, I am believing God that one day some of these people that hate our country, that, you know, just want violence, are going to go, I got saved! And they totally change, and that's what I'm believing God for. Amen. Are you ready for the Word? Put your hands out to me. Father, we believe in the name of Jesus every time we gather that your Holy Spirit is here. And I surrender to you, Holy One. Use my mouth, Lord. I fear you more than anything. And I, I definitely want to be used of you. I don't want to say anything that's out of line and not according to your word. Thank you for the hearing ears tonight. Thank you for the correction that's going to come forth. We thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, 
So I, I picked a topic tonight. I like to teach on Wednesdays, and I know some people listening online, and hopefully those who come to Sunday or not here Wednesday will listen to this. Because tonight I want to talk about the glory of God. Every say the glory of God. There's so much misunderstanding about the glory of God, and I'm going to straighten that out tonight. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back in the Old Testament, look at what they saw as the glory of God, but we're in the New Testament. We're in the New Testament. Amen? So you understand that the glory of God is in you. You possess the glory of God. But there's something about us coming together that just the glory of God, it's, it's in us, but there's just something about the glory of God. If you're praying for the presence of God, he's in you. But I believe there is another presence that the anointing can flow out. And I'm going to talk about that, but we're going to go back in the Old Testament. We're going to see some stuff that was in the Old Testament to correct some stuff in the New Testament. Because, you know, when I was a pastor and when I was an associate pastor in a big, big church, uh, people used to say, oh, that was a great service. Why? Uh, because the song was great, because you got goosebumps, uh, because somebody, somebody did something. They were looking at things that dictated to them, to their flesh, that the glory was there and it wasn't there the week before. Well, I think the glory is there when people get saved. Well, there are people getting saved online, watching the website, they're watching Facebook. And there's people that may be sitting in a congregation like me that were a little too afraid to raise their hand. But they said in their seats, Jesus Forgive me my sin, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. The glory of God is always present when we're together. But well, we're going to go back in the Old Testament. We're going to look at how, what the glory of God was then. Correct some error, but also see, I think things can happen any way God wants them to happen. Amen? So, I wonder how many believers in the really believing in the saving grace of Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior really understand what it means when we speak about the glory of God. And why is it so important for us to understand things that are in the Word of God? Because Proverbs 29 and verse 18 says, Where there's no vision, the people perish. Listen to the message translation. If people can't see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. But when they attend to what He reveals, they are blessed. In other words, when we get in the Word of God, when we receive teaching, and we see what God's saying in His Word, it is going to raise that hope that Jane's talking about. Amen? And I like to put it this way. If we don't know why we exist and what God is doing today, there's little worth to our existence. I feel bad for people that don't have hope. I feel bad for people that are involved in all this violence and fighting and, dis and disagreeing, whatever. Listen, that isn't going on in the kingdom. All is well. And when Jesus said, I'll teach you on this Sunday, that he says, I give you my peace, but not as the world knows peace. The world's peace is absence from conflict, absence from tribulation or test or trial. We get that here on earth from the enemy who's trying to circumvent your faith in God. And so the peace that God gives us is that we know who God is, we know who we are, and we know what the promises of God are. Why? Because I'm not lacking vision. I'm not lacking understanding of who God is. I'm in the Word of God. I'm coming to church. I'm being taught who God is. He loves me. He'll never leave me nor forsake me. My name is written on the palms of his hands. Jesus went to the cross for me. And if you were the only person that ever existed on the earth, Jesus would have went to the cross for you. We need to understand who God is. We need to understand what the glory of God is. We all need to pray Psalm 25. Lord, show me thy ways. Teach me thy paths, lead me in thy truth, and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation, and upon thee do I wait all the day. Any specific goal or vision of this church will always, always come under the overall mission statement of vision that God gave me back in 1989, and that is that wed vision. It's right up there on the, the, the wall. Win souls, establish the believer, and demonstrate the power of God, the love of God, the power and the love of the Holy Spirit. Amen? To demonstrate the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit, how? By loving people, by healing the sick, by delivering the oppressed, and caring for those in need. I'll tell you what my prayer is today. You know, we talked about this last night in prayer, that, and I like what you said, the voice of the church needs to be heard. 
How can a handful of people that live in sin change our law? How can a handful of people allow millions of babies to be killed? How can a handful of people? And yet there are hundreds of thousands of Christians. If we would unite in a vision and understand the word of God and stand for that word and be able to say to people, no, that's wrong. And so what? They call you a bad name. So what? I'm going to stand for what the word of God says. Amen. And we need to understand that we have power. And people say, well, I want to see the glory of God. Now, we, we talked about the influence we can have. But I'll tell you what I've been praying for. This is what I pray. Lord, I don't want credit for what you do, but I want credibility. And when they preach the word of God in the book of Acts, what's it say? Their word was confirmed by signs, wonders, and miracles. And I think that's what we're missing today. Lord, I don't want credit, but I want credibility. I want people to know when I teach the Word of God, they see the power of the glory of God showing up by how we demonstrate the love and the power of the Holy Spirit. And I believe as individuals and as a church, we're to demonstrate the glory of God, the power and the blessings of God. The Lord will do this through you and through us. Wouldn't it be cool to be labeled a heretic or crazy because you stand for the Word of God? I'm getting way off my notes, but I was, something came to, a thought came to me today while I was praying. It says in the book of Hebrews that some Christians chose to be martyred. Do you know that? Others were delivered, but some chose to be martyred because there was a greater reward for them. Now, I, I honestly, I don't really want to be martyred, but would it be cool to people to know who you were and what you believed in? Not wishy-washy, not whatever. Oh, there goes that Christian. There goes that heretic. There goes that person that's against this, against that. You know, if they're against this because I'm for something else, I'm for the Word of God. I want to be known. I want this church to be known for this. We take a stand on what the Word of God says. Not wishy-washy, not worrying about what other people say. I want to go to heaven and people point at me, oh, there's a nutcase. There's a heretic. He was a crazy guy for Jesus. And on their way to hell... <laughs> what do we see in the Bible? We're going to see in the Bible what the Word of God says, that we're to exhibit and explain by specimen. Get it? We're to explain and exhibit the glory of God by specimen. So I ask you, how will they see His glory if we don't demonstrate His glory? How will we experience the power if we don't, how will they experience the power of God if we don't demonstrate the power of God? And how will they partake of his blessings if we don't teach people and demonstrate what those blessings of God are? How can we demonstrate something we don't understand? If you're waiting for a cloud, if you're waiting for goosebumps, flesh, now God can do that. But if you say the glory of God is not here every time we gather, that's not right. Oh God, come be with us, Holy Spirit. That's a mock on Jesus. I will send you my Holy Spirit. The book of Luke says, if you know how to give good gifts, you as earthly fathers know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father, that means you're saved because he's your heavenly father, give you the Holy Spirit if you ask him. Lord, I want your Holy Spirit. I want your glory to shine through me by my words and my actions. You can't give out what you don't possess. You can't reveal to others what you don't understand. You can't reveal to others what's not real to you. So we need to study. We need to pursue. We need to possess and then demonstrate God's glory, God's power, and God's blessings. I have never felt... Anxious, if that's the right word, when Y2K was coming and everybody was anxious and upset, the world was going to go nuts and whatever. I had such a peace and a calm. I wasn't concerned about it. And those that were here, we used to sing a song. I remembered that oh, everything's going to be okay. And it was. Nothing happened. When 9-11 happened, I went there. I cried. It affected me. For those of you that heard me preach that Sunday, I just wept. It was a very powerful spiritual thing. The enemy attacked. And, but as a nation, we united. And we came against it. I have kind of an anxiety and anxiousness about what's coming. 
There may be some changes in our government. And I'm concerned. Because, folks, you're the enemy. What we stand for, some parties don't agree with. And you are the enemy. And they will come after you. So I'm anxious. I'm praying. I'm not on my face. I'm, so, I'm praying. But you know what I believe? In the midst of all of this, the glory of God is going to be revealed more than ever before. Listen, when the church is taken out, we're holding back the Antichrist, the Holy Spirit, the glory of God. When we're taken out of here, will we be missed? I think we will be. Not the way it is now, but something's going to, I believe something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. We're going to stand out. I'm so off my notes here, but I got to keep going. All right? Jesus, I liked what you said. Jesus didn't come as a military person. He didn't come as a politician. He came as a simple person. Most of us are kind of just simple, everyday folk. But when the Spirit of God comes upon us, and He is, something's going to be different about us. We're going to stand out. We're going to be the remedy. So when things get really bad, man, get ready, because God's going to get really good. And I believe, I'm believing God that there's going to be revival. Revival's going to come before the church is called out. We may be living in that day. I don't know, but I pray we will. Amen? So I don't know about you. I, get, I, I got tired of just reading about what we see happening in the book of Acts. And the great revivals and healings that took place in the past and in other countries. Uh, we haven't had that pastor's conference because of COVID, but... Uh, I used to get together with foreign pastors, and I used to hear about the things going on. You know, the United States doesn't represent only what God is doing in the world. There are Christians being slaughtered all over the place. There are Christians that are proud to die for Jesus. There are Christians that are winning thousands of Muslims and Hindus to the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't hear about that because the news won't report it. And there are miracles taking place. I've heard miracles. We support a team Sergio Nixi Moria, I think their last name is. I mean, I know their first names. They're down in South and Central America, and they're constantly sending us reports. I'm going to have to put one up on the screen one day. They are seeing miracles, healings. In fact, Nixi, the, the wife, is supposed to be dead. She shouldn't be alive, and she's preaching the Word of God. This is going on. This is the glory of God being demonstrated that we need to see in this country. Amen? And what I was going to say was Jesus... Never got beat up. We're so afraid of a bug. Jesus never got beat up. Never got sick. No one could overpower him. He'd walk through the crowd. Until he freely gave up his life for our sin. He freely. He said to those people surrounding him, listen, if I wanted to, I could call 10,000 legions of angels and I'd wipe you guys out. But he chose to die on our behalf. And the greater works, he said, Jesus said, the works that I do, shall you do also. So should we be afraid? What should we be afraid of? If we're to copy and be like Jesus was, no one could touch him. Oh, they persecuted him. They ridiculed him. They tried to kill him, tried to push him off a cliff, and he just walked through the crowd. It's the same with us. Can we believe in that divine protection? Can we believe that we're surrounded and possessed by the glory of God? Yes. Amen? I know her mom because you're in your mask, but I'm not wearing a mask because I can't breathe and preach at the same time and wear a mask, so I'm sorry. I'm, I'm fine, so if I spit on anybody, forgive me. So how do we demonstrate the glory of God? His glory, his power, and his blessing. How do we do that? The glory of God is the least understood and even the least experienced today. Yet throughout the Old Testament, the children of God express, experience his glory on many occasions that we're going to look at. The word glory is mentioned 390 times in the Bible. What is the glory of God? Is it a feeling of euphoria? Is it goosebumps when we hear a great song? I get goosebumps when we worship. But I know I always have the Spirit of God. Is it something you're supposed to see? Now, we're going to look at the Old Testament because some people are still confused about Old Testament glory of God. People are praying, oh, Lord, send your glory. You have the Spirit of God living within you. I'm praying, Lord, let the glory manifest itself in healings, in salvations, whatever. So after Moses, let's get in the Old Testament, after the Moses and the children of Israel followed precisely the instruction of God, 
building the tabernacle, something wonderful happened. Look in Exodus chapter 40 and verse 34. Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because the cloud abode therein, and the glory of God filled the tabernacle. And when the cloud was taken up from over the tabernacle, the children of Israel went onward in all their journeys. But if the cloud was not taken up, then they journeyed not till the day was taken away. See, they had to see a physical manifestation whether it was a cloud, in this case it's a cloud, right? Old Testament, but praise God. Does that mean God can't do that today? God can do anything he wants, amen? The glory, listen, the glory is a manifestation of the presence of God. As Aaron's and his sons, the priesthood of God, fulfilled their priestly duties, Moses said something to them in Leviticus, again, Old Testament, Leviticus Chapter 9 and verse 6. And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that you should do, and the glory of God shall appear unto you. Hallelujah. Leviticus 9 verse 23. Old Testament, exciting stuff though. Wow. Leviticus chapter 9 verse 23. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation and came out and blessed the people, and the glory of God appeared unto all the people. Now, I like to think about the Holy Spirit here. And you need to understand, in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come upon, wouldn't inhabit, would come upon the priest, the king, and the prophet. It would come upon them, and then it would leave. Perfect example was Samson. If you ever saw pictures of Samson, he looks like this muscle-bound guy. Why would Delilah ask him where he got his strength? If some six-foot-seven guy and bulging with muscles, and I'd ask him where he got his strength, it's very obvious he's strong. He looks strong. He's big. He's a weightlifter. I don't know. But I think, I think Samson was just an ordinary guy. David was an ordinary guy. In fact, it says he was kind of feminine-looking. That's what the Bible says. And the Spirit of God would come upon him. The Spirit of God came upon Samson, and he was able to kill, what, a thousand Philistines with a jawbone of an ass. I always have to say that right, the ass bone of a jaw. I always got that wrong. But the jawbone of an ass. The donkey, he killed a thousand Philistines. Why? Because, this, you got it, Joe, because the Spirit of God came upon him, but it would lift off. See, the Spirit of God, the glory of God would show up, but it could not stay. See, we are so blessed. What's the difference? Before the blood of Jesus Christ, our bodies are not cleansed. The Holy Spirit's not going to move into a dirty house. The Holy Spirit cannot abide in a dirty house. And the Word of God says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. They fell short of the glory of God. We fall short of the glory of God. In other words, the presence of God cannot come within us because we're sinners. But when Jesus came... And you believe in Jesus. He died for your sin. He cleansed you. He purified you. He sanctified you. You are a clean house. Now all you have to do is what the book of Luke says. If you being evil know how to give good tips to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit. Now, why can I get the Holy Spirit? Because Jesus is my Lord and my Heavenly Father. I've been adopted, and now I'm a child of God. He's my Heavenly Father. I am cleansed. I am purified. I am sanctified. Holy Spirit, move in. Not because of me, but because I've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. The glory doesn't leave me. I can grieve the Holy Spirit, but I can receive the Holy Spirit. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad, my glory rejoices, and my flesh shall rest in hope. I looked up that word glory. It's that living you, the, the, the real you, the spirit of you rejoices. I'm happy. 
I rejoice because the Spirit of God dwells in me. Here, the glory would fall. The presence of God would come when they're obedient, when they're worshiping God. And God needed to do that to show the, 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 the unbelieving Hebrew children that he existed. I just did my blog, I don't know if it's coming out, uh, if you published it or not, about uh, believing is seeing or seeing is believing. How'd you like to be Thomas, known as Doubting Thomas, forever? <laughs> he said, unless I see the nail prints in his hands and put my fingers in and thrust my hand into his side where he was pierced, I can't believe. See, he didn't believe. And Jesus said, blessed are those who do not see and believe. You know why you're saved? Because you believe it. You know why the Holy Spirit can abide in you and you don't have to see him? Because you believe it and you're blessed. It's called faith. Faith sees. Amen? So the glory is the presence or the revelation of the presence of God to his people. In the Old Testament, it was that wall of protection and the endorsing of God, set, showing his people that they were set apart. Can you imagine today? I mean, these people understood angels. They believed in a deity. Not like today. They, when they traveled through the wilderness, that wilderness was filled with little poisonous snakes, and they never got bit till they disobeyed God. And that's why they had to raise up that pole. You know, the medical symbol, I don't think it's the same anymore. It used to be a pole with a serpent around it. That's, that is the, a de depiction of Jesus Christ, who is a serpent raised on a pole for our sin. I don't know if the medical field still has that symbol or not. I think they, they, they still have it. Is it a pole with a snake wrapped around it? I don't know. I've seen it, and it's just a pole. But here's the bottom line. Can you imagine? During the day, a cloud, they're in a desert. My son was there. He said, it gets really hot during the day. And the cloud shielded them during the day. And at night, there was a pillar of fire that kept them warm at night. I always envision a fire over this building. Can you imagine if there was a pillar of fire over this building? The fire department would come racing here, and as soon as they got near it, the glory of God would just go, they'd go falling back. People would come by, what is that? And yet they doubted the presence of God, questioned the presence of God when they had physical evidence that the glory in that form was present. See, we're, we're, we're faith people. We believe in the glory of God here. There's angels around us. The Spirit of God is here. We worship the Lord today. Numbers chapter 14, verse 10. Numbers chapter 14, verse 10. But all the congregation, they'd stone them with stones. This is when uh, there, there, there was rebels against Moses and Aaron. But all the congregation, they'd stone with them with stones. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. That's a good way to scare people. As we need today. It was the glory that was revealed in the tabernacle in defense of Joshua and Caleb. Sorry about to be stoned because they're standing to take Canaan while the other ten spies cowered in fear. I think they would have believed them at that point. In Numbers chapter 16, in verse 19, this is Old Testament manifestations of the glory. 16, 19. And Korah gathered all the congregation. This guy was a rebel against them into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. Let me read it, because it's a cool story. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, Separate yourself among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. Wow. <laughs> Imagine that happening today. Smite them, O Lord. <laughs> we don't live in that age. We live in the age of grace. It was the glory of God that appeared and to all the congregation in the defense of Moses from Korah and his followers who challenged the authority of Moses. Because the glory of God is the manifestation of the presence of the Lord. And it still exists today. 
It's so misunderstood and so rarely experienced because the glory is not yearned for. I don't want to pray, Lord, Holy Spirit, show up. Presence of God. God, you got to believe that he is here. What I want, we want a greater manifestation. We want healings and salvations. I look forward to the day when I'm preaching and people just fall out under the power. Boy, I remember when people used to come to the altar and the power of God would hit them and they go boom down. I know a few people remember that. I remember going up one time at my pastor and we had a meeting. And I, I ain't going down. I ain't going down. This is, this is, and my legs, my legs were getting weaker. It's, I could feel like there was a weight on me. I just gave up and went down. And then we had other people, they're like this. They're up at the prayer line, they're like this. And so they, they, they sit down and they fall back. <laughs> like, is this what we do? No, this is what the Spirit of God does. I long for that. Because we got too scientific and technical. Still exists today. Praise brings the anointing. Worship brings the glory. When true worship, but it must come from a submitted, adoring heart that understands the worth and the majesty of a living God. I believe those days are coming again. You guys may get knocked on your cans one day up there. We may keep singing. Things begin to happen when the glory of God is embraced by his people. People are not depending on goosebumps or clouds, but faith that God inhabits the praises of his people. I say that almost time I get up here. The Lord inhabits the praises of his people. And in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy. That means people coming here worshiping God, seeking God. We're all caught up in the worship of God. Cancer gets healed. Blind eyes are open. Deaf ears are open. The lame walk. Man, I long for those days. I saw them. I saw them in a church I was with. In fact, I was praying today. I said, Lord, you would have showed me this stuff. I'm like a little kid who's hungry. We should all be that way. Things begin to happen when the glory of God is embraced by his people. People who are not depending, again, on the physical, just faith believes that God can do this. And the spirit of revelation begins to work in our hearts. And we're changed by his glory. And in that surrender, dependence, and worship, we are being changed by his glory. It's in that atmosphere that we become conscious of God's love. People who come here in love, yes, we allow the glory to shine to us by loving on people. But you can come here. I mean, it's happened to me. When I didn't really know the Lord that well, I just felt the love of God. It's an I pray that people would, I had that one experience one time when I was in my backyard. I was probably in my early teens or maybe under 10 years old. And I just felt something. It was so overwhelming. The presence of God It was like, man, I didn't want to go back to earth wherever I was. It was incredible. I say, Lord, I want to feel that. That's flesh. But it's okay. It's okay. God honors that. Hallelujah. Second Chronicles, chapter, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1 through 3. We're looking at Old Testament manifestations. God can do whatever God wants to do. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1 through 3. And now when Solomon had made an end of praying, this is when they're dedicating the temple, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices. And the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because of the glory of the Lord that filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of God upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavements and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Isn't that wonderful? But you know what? Even when that happened, they turned from God. They'd see these incredible things and they'd still turn from God. We live in day and age where those things can happen. But faith, the just shall live by faith. A faith in God. God, you're present. And Lord, I believe in the name of Jesus because of your presence. Those who don't believe who need healing can be healed. Lord, I believe in your presence and your power. You're here. You can do whatever you want. Be welcome in this place, Lord. I don't need to see fire, supply, smoke. I, I, you're here. 
faith receives the glory of God today. In that glory, God, we become conscious of his holiness. Now, I've had that experience. Maybe some of you have had it, where you're so into the worship that you're overwhelmed with the holiness of God. That's a supernatural thing. It's found in Isaiah chapter 6. Go over there. This is good. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 through 3. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne. This is a vision to Isaiah. High, lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. This is King James. And with twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Did you hear what I just said? The whole earth is filled with his glory. If you go outside, that's what it says in the book of Romans, everybody instinctively knows that God is real. You look up at the sky at night. You look at the trees and the birds and the lantern fly. No, and, and all these other things. <laughs> they're the devil, I'm sorry. <laughs> they're pretty, but they're pretty dead. They're prettier dead, I should say. You can't help but see the glory of God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and all that dwell therein. Amen? And we need to have faith. You receive the fact the glory of God is everywhere. It's the manifestations of the presence of God. Now, the glory of the Lord is revealed when an important ingredient is very evident. Unity. Oneness of spirit produces unity. When the people of God get together in a congregation, and we all believe the same thing, unity welcomes the glory of God. Not division, not strife. But you know what the cool thing is from what I read in the Word of God? If two shall agree. So I always say, Lord, if there's, I know Judy and I would be in agree. If there's other people that agree that the Lord is present, that his glory is wonderful. I long for that day when we are so overwhelmed with the presence of God. that, And we've seen it here. People weep. They go to the altar. And some people are touched and other people are not. But people manifest in different ways. So don't judge. You know, when I was first going to church and, and I knew that God was there, I mean, um, I would t- tell people, I'm worshiping inside. <laughs> I wouldn't raise my hands. Right. But I was worshiping inside. We can't judge where other people are at. And people are at different levels. But we come in unity knowing that the presence of God is here. And we all possess the Holy Spirit if you have received him. And there's something about us coming in unity and in worship of God. We recognize that God is God. Quote, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation. You understand why a demonic power who's ever, I'm not going to name names, is trying to divide the church, trying to break it apart. You know, I don't know if you could say I'm a Christian and then believe in certain things people believe in. Abortion's wrong. Certain lifestyles are wrong. I will love people that live that way, but you're wrong. I'm sorry. It's abomination to God, certain things. And Christ, the Christians need to take a stand. I love you, but this is what the Word of God says. In fact, I just read recently that if you don't tell people they're in sin, you're the watchman. Well, they're going to be not like me. Huh. So what? God loves me. Glory to God. Second Chronicles chapter 5. Did I read that already? So what happens when the presence of God is manifested in the people who worship and revere his presence? I feel like putting out on those gates, enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. In fact, it's somewhere in the book of Ecclesiastes says, don't take it lightly when you enter into the house of God. Don't take it lightly. So what happens when we 
when we say the pre when the presence of God is manifested in people who worship and revere his holy presence. 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 10 and 11. When it came to pass, when the priests were come out of the holy place, that the cloud filled the house of the Lord, so that the priests could not stand the minister because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. Now, listen, this is Old Testament. They needed to see to believe. And God knew that. I don't need to see to believe. I believe when we come together, there's a potential of a glory of God. He's here, but a manifestation that we've never experienced before. I'm believing that people are going to come here. You know what's interesting? We can have workmen. It hasn't happened in a while, but we've had workmen come here to do repairs. And they come in here and they go, man, there's something about this place. Why do they recognize it? See, we're fickle sometimes because, yeah, we're just going to church today. It's just another day. No, it's not. When we come together, man, I once put it a thing. I wanted to have cups made. I think we did have them made for that. Come and experience. Come for the experience. Why do you go down the shore or go to the mountains or go to Great Adventure? For the experience. Every time we come to church, we should experience. Be ready for the ex God can do anything today. Could this be the day? You know, when, when manifestations happen in churches, like what I used to go to, and sometimes in here, or in, in the history, they weren't expecting anything to happen. They just came, yeah, I should say, they were expecting something to happen, but they didn't expect what happened that particular day. Azusa Street. The Great Awakening. Wasn't that around the Civil War? I mean, when the country was divided in chaos, God showed up in a great and mighty way. Amen? Let's keep moving. So, the glory of God also brings the endowment of power. You have the glory of God within you, the endowment of power. If anything we possess and we don't realize is power. Because it takes our human effort and it turns it into supernatural authority and power. We were praying last night, the scripture, and Chuck said it last night, that the fervent, effectual, continued prayers of a righteous man or woman makes great power available. And it will work. So when we're praying, especially in unity, you know, I kind of vision, you know, they're praying and all of a sudden, Something's like, like, a, like a tornado's forming. It's building, it's building, and it's going to affect something. It's going to change something. If Christians can get together. I was so blessed to see that march in Washington. There was like 50,000 people. The news didn't cover it. If it was a riot, they'd cover it for 10 people. But you got 50,000 people praying, facing the Capitol building, and praying that God would intervene. That's making great power. Something's happened. Something's going to happen. may not be the way you want it, but it's going to happen. Right? The glory of God brings ease into every area of ministry. I often tell the story when, when I had the opportunity, my pastor used to stick his head in, and we had, we'd have four, five, six hundred people come out on a Wednesday uh, morning for a uh, healing service. And we saw great miracles. And he would stick his head in, and always, Jim, you ready? You know, I figure he's always kidding, Jim, you ready? You ready? And so something told me inside, I better get something ready for healing service, because we would teach on healing, and then we lay hands on the sick, and we saw miracles. And so one day he stuck us in. He said, Jim, you ready? You're up. And I go, huh? And I often tell the story. I got up there, and I, I had a great word, and uh, time to pray for people, and, and I, I was thinking about what everybody else did. I saw what everybody did on TV, you know, spit, shout, jump, do everything, and nothing was happening. I always remember the story, and I don't tell a lot. And the Spirit of God said to me, are you done? Are you done yet? So I just backed off. And I relied on the glory and the power of God. Because look what I said here. The glory of God brings ease into every area of ministry. Healing and even finances. Because people, if you submit to the glory and the anointing of God, great things happen. It affects finances too because people will give freely and easier. Because they give out of appreciation rather than obligation. His glory, when we receive it, removes the struggle, the striving, and the human effort. 
because we surrender to a greater power, His glory. Amen. And next week, I'm going to bring it into the New Testament. We're going to see how they manifested there. Now, this is great. Old Testament, great. I can believe that can happen today. But they really relied on seeing a cloud, a feeling, or whatever. Oh, we're going to see things. But it's going to be what Jesus saw when he manifested the glory of God. Because I don't see anywhere, maybe in Catholic painting and stuff, where they have a halo around Jesus and, you know, they had to show, you know, little birds flying over and that's the Holy Spirit. Why they... Why they make the Holy Spirit a dove is beyond me. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a representative because it descended upon Jesus as if in the shape of a dove. Amen. And we're going to look at the New Testament glory of God. Hope it gets you guys excited. So when you come to church, you're saying, man, what's God going to do tonight? Amen. Amen.